I was never much of a wild player, so this week I set aside time to try and look up some of the best decks in that version of the game. And something quite astonished me, the resources for research aren't there. I can look up seven different versions of standard even paladin on HS Replay, each with an individual win rate, but the wild format doesn't have any of those resources. How are you supposed to know the best decks? Do you just play whatever strikes your fancy? Okay, fine, perhaps I'm being hypocritical. Greetings and welcome to Hearthstone Theory. After focusing for weeks now on the new Witchwood set, I decided it was time to branch into a new topic, and as such I'm looking into a format I don't have much experience in, the Wild format. It's surprising that I haven't touched this format yet, because I actually make a conscious effort to keep all of my rotating cards. And yet, I have an aversion to playing Wild. Why? Blizzard claims that the reason the Wild format exists is to give people a place to play their old decks from previous expansions and yet I have almost never graced the game mode with my curiosity. Last episode, I looked at a meta ripe with flaws and criticisms and praised Blizzard for it, because frankly, they've done a perfectly good job maintaining the balance. However, Blizzard, before you hand me an offer to replace Ben Brode as your official spokesperson, oh, by the way, rest in peace, Ben Brode. Blizzard, I have a bone to pick with you. A big bone, the biggest bone. Your mishandling of the wild format has crippled the mode permanently. Okay, perhaps that's a slight exaggeration, but allow me to make my point. From the nature of how Blizzard has conducted itself since the Wild format was released, a divide in the Hearthstone community has been created. A divide between Wild players and Standard players that could have been mitigated, could have been bridged, but wasn't. Today I will examine how Blizzard's actions had a direct hand in creating that divide, and how it isn't simply the result of different players wanting different things from Hearthstone. I'm not saying that it's impossible to play both game modes, many people do. My case for today is much simpler. Blizzard's goal for Wild to be a place where someone can go back and play one of their old decks has not been fulfilled to the extent it could be, and specific actions Blizzard has taken has caused this. Bear in mind that I am just one Hearthstone player, and that your experience with the Standard and Wild formats may be completely different. If so, be sure to leave a comment so I can see your side of the story. However, I do believe that what I am about to say today is what a lot of people have been feeling in the Standard format for some time. Anyways, let's begin. A few weeks ago on Reddit, an interesting discussion reached the top of the threads where the argument was made, Naga Sea Witch OP, please nerf. Hearthstone designer Mike Donay responded directly, saying, Naga Sea Witch not OP, maybe nerf. I'm not going to debate the details of whether or not Naga Sea Witch is overpowered, I'm just going to ask and answer the question of why this debate even began. When the Wild format was obtaining new cards for the Year of the Mammoth, Naga Sea Witch was almost never played, and rotating out. However, a new culprit was entering the fray with Journey to Unguro, by the name of Bright-Eyed Scout, coincidentally another card that sees very little play. Now I'm not certain exactly how this game is code to have resulted in this, but the gist is that Blizzard changed how the cost of cards in your hand is set. Instead of being decided outside of the card, if, this circumstance, then, card costs this, it was set on the card itself, changing the cost of the card directly in your hands. Seems innocent enough. However, this change failed to account for the epitome of cost reduction cases, giants. Needless to say, once the change was made to Naga Sea Witch, Wild was changed forever with the now classic Turn 5 Giants. To those uninitiated, it's quite simple. Naga Sea Witch is played, and then most of the giants in your hand cost zero. This powerful combo quickly became a staple in Wild, with decks in Hunter and Warlock finding significant prevalence. While Blizzard definitely made the conscious decision to make this change, it is unclear whether or not they intended the combination with Giants to be as powerful as it became. This honestly makes the interaction seem more like a bug, and less like a well-calculated maneuver by Blizzard. However, the intentionality of the action is irrelevant, as is the exact power of this combination. What is completely true and noteworthy is the prevalence of this deck and how frustrating it is to play against. After all, a combination that can let a half dozen 8-8 minions be played is simply game-ending. It's the equivalent of the Exodia Mage combo being possible by turn 5. This acute frustration is most apparent to new players of Wild, specifically players coming from Standard hoping to play one of their old decks from yesteryear. Remember, Naga Sea Witch was unused when it wasn't in Wild, so the Naga Giants decks are completely alien to players. If Blizzard truly wants people to come to Wild to play their old cards and face off against even older ones, Perhaps their first and strongest welcome shouldn't be a combination that never saw standard play. Imagine being a longtime player of the game that decides to dip their toes into the wild format. 
They dig up an old handlock deck that they've saved for years and step onto the mode, only for their opponents to use Naga Sea Witch, a card they've never seen played, to summon six giants. This isn't nostalgic defeat, it isn't familiar, it's alien. While decks that use Voidcaller and Malganus are equally as powerful, at least they are a brand of power that older players are familiar with and will recognize. Naga Sea Witch is not this, because she inherited her strength by accident at precisely the wrong time. So one card mutated into an atrocity that was never meant to be, and Blizzard hesitated to quell it. This created a new deck archetype never seen outside the wild format, which eradicated this mode's mission to let old decks and old cards flourish. Without the benefit of nostalgia, this card is simply a new, alien form of power. Now some of you may be asking, Penniless, don't new synergies emerge from the interactions of old and new cards anyways? Surely those synergies also destroyed the idea of these old decks being prevalent. And yes, astute viewer, you would be right, except that Blizzard appears to want to end combinations like that before they begin, which would be nice, except for a host of new problems. I invite you to come with me on a journey back to the release of Knights of the Frozen Throne. Halfway through the card reveals, the card The File was uncovered, and players immediately began creating connections to Dreadsteed. These dreams were short-lived, since Blizzard announced at the same time that Dreadsteed would be altered to accommodate. At first, I didn't think much of it. If this wasn't the case, then the two cards would be an infinite loop, breaking the game. However, then I remembered Grim Patron, and how it could likewise create an infinite loop with Defile. Why wasn't that changed? The answer? Any infinite loops are shortened to 20 cycles, making the combination powerful, but not everlasting. With this information in mind, I ask you to reinvestigate this altering of Dreadsteed and what it accomplished. To be fair, a 2 card 6 mana combo that completely clears the board seems pretty powerful. Unless you're a paladin player, in which case it's just the status quo. I do kid slightly though, this combination would also nullify additional minions bonds, and in the end technically leaves a 4 drop on the field, albeit a weak one. However, it's combinations like that which make Hearthstone fascinating, making cards greater than the sum of their parts. Rejecting this idea for the sake of balance just seemed… off. As a small side note, the nerf did serve to eliminate other synergies that Dreadseed had. For example, Mayor Nog and Fogger and Dreadseed paired perfectly to create ridiculous means, and Baron Rivendare could benefit from Dreadseed being slain multiple times in one turn. One nerf later, and both those synergies were weakened. Anyways, while such a pre-nerf has never been seen before, it was justified as Blizzard knowing what they were doing, having resources and time outside of our experience. But even then, it's odd that a Dreadseed board clear was considered too powerful, while the Naga Sea Witch combination is considered completely fine. Even barring the power discrepancies, shouldn't control combinations generally be held in higher regard than tempo-based ones? I'm incapable of answering those questions. While I believe this nerf was an overreaction, Blizzard could easily prove me wrong if they showed their data. So instead, I'll get back on topic with the standard wild divide, because with this nerf, Blizzard missed a golden opportunity, one that would have strengthened the wild format and the game significantly. If Dreadsteed was never nerfed, people would become curious, in much the same way that people are now curious about Black Hog Gunspire and Bouncing Blade. Does that combination work? Can I build a deck to utilize it? This is another way that the wild format appeals to players. It lets them use combinations that are impossible in standard. Blizzard instead nerfing Dreadsteed robbed players of the experience of creating that deck, which may or may not have kept the mode balanced, but definitely decreased the flow of players looking to play wild. Combinations of this sort are inevitable for the wild format. The more cards there are, the more likely ridiculous combinations can be created. Take Magic the Gathering, for example. If that game is played in the vintage or legacy formats, two versions that allow for a wider range of cards, it is possible to pull off combinations that can end the game on turn 1. Dreadsteed and Defile would have been one of the first combinations of this caliber for the wild format, and yet Blizzard decided to nip it before it existed. Perhaps this preserved the integrity of wild, we will never know. What we do know is that any player who had spare Dreadsteeds in their collection, and was excited to go back into wild to try and see if that combination could get pulled off, instead became 800 dust richer and remained in standard. That seems like the ultimate missed opportunity. While I have focused in this video on pointing out the flaws of how Blizzard handled the wild format, I do want to convey that this doesn't delegitimize the game mode. If anything, the Dreadseed nerf shows that Blizzard does want to keep wild legitimate, balanced, and most importantly, fun. However, it's important to recognize the times that Blizzard has faulted on the handling of wild, and what wild should be. Wild is a place where old cards and combinations get a chance to meet new cards and combinations. The results of this meeting will often be overpowered, catastrophic, and hilarious. 
However, in the cases that I illustrated, Blizzard first let a new and buffed card in Wild run amok, then destroyed another old card before it had the chance to show its true strength. These actions directly subvert what Wild stands for, a place for the old to meet the new. If I were Blizzard, I would consider Dreadseed water under the bridge, but would work towards reverting Naga Sea Witch back to what it once was, a weak card that no one ever saw played. Once I had done that, I would be particularly selective about the nerfs and changes made to Wild, allowing the standard format nerfs to filter out any cards that are too powerful. Perhaps I would implement a banned cards list to temporarily nullify particularly strong cards. Is this the correct course of action? I don't know. After all, whatever we know, Blizzard knows more. But the reason I have chosen to discuss this is very simple. Hearthstone has a problem. Wild and Standard have a divide, one that only seems to be growing. I want to be able to play with my old cards, Blizzard, and I know you want me to do that as well. So do me a solid. Close the divide. And give me a reason.